Hello everyone, and welcome to your seventh Apple debugging tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the address sanitizer that's built into Xcode as part of Clang. And Xcode adds this nice layer on top that allows us to observe some of the memory uh, when we have a memory corrupting event. Now, this particular tutorial is generally not that useful for Swift or even really Objective-C developers, if that's really all they're interacting with. This is more for cases where you might be interacting with a C library, since C is a relatively unsafe language, right? And Swift is pretty safe. It really avoids many of these scenarios. But in C, it's pretty easy to allocate some memory and perhaps do some bad things where you're accessing wrong pieces of memory, even though you, you think that you actually have it as valid memory. Now, we're going to talk about three different cases where the address sanitizer is be, can be useful. Uh, there are more of these, but um, I'll leave a link for actually the WWDC video where uh, they introduced the address sanitizer and there's more information around that. But the three we're talking about today are the heap buffer overflow, a use after f uh, return, and a use after free. Now, uh, one more little plug here. If you haven't seen my advanced Swift tutorial on uh, unsafe pointers, you might want to check that out because that's mostly what we're going to be dealing with in this particular tutorial. And I'll le leave all the links for those on this video. Okay, so the first example that we want to talk about is a, a heap buffer overflow. And a heap buffer overflow is a case where you allocate a buffer. So generally you're in C, you in malloc, uh, let's say, you know, 10 bytes, and then you would try to access or mutate the 11th byte, right? The byte right after uh, the thing that you've allocated. And so in this case, you're overflowing the buffer, right? And um, you're essentially trying to store something in space that you don't have access to. Um, so that's the, the first example that we're doing here. And to do this same thing in Swift, we can use the unsafe mutable pointer. And so in this case, we have uh, this pointer here where we've allocated um, three bytes. And then we you know, fill in all the alignment stuff. Again, this was covered in my other uh, advanced Swift tutorial. So we've allocated a, a buffer of basically three bytes. And then we try to uh, write to this buffer. Now, uh, this looks like it should be fine, uh, except for the fact that if you're paying close attention, right? We've only allocated three bytes to this space, and we are actually trying to write a fourth byte into memory. And so this should actually cause a problem, right? So uh, I, uh, what I'm doing down here is I'm just rebinding that memory into a uh, character, and then we're just printing out the string. Now, if I go ahead and run this, and we'll see that that's interesting, it actually works just fine. Right, so I can run this probably a lot of times, right? And pretty much all the time, it's gonna work just fine. And this is really, you know, not necessarily deterministic behavior because here we're ultimately storing something that uh, I shouldn't be storing something there. And this could result in some seriously bad things, right? You could be overriding totally different memory and this could result in either silent behavior or it could crash your program. Now, I wouldn't really be able to find this unless somebody reported that this was happening, but this is where the address sanitizer can be useful. So if I go up to the scheme editor up here and under run diagnostics, this is where we found the thread sanitizer last time, I can enable the address sanitizer. And I'm also gonna check on this detect use of stack after return. We'll talk about that case in a little bit later, but let's enable both of these for the address sanitizer, and then we'll close that. Now, if I go ahead and run this again, we'll see that the address sanitizer jumps into action and realizes that, hey, you're trying to write to some blob of data that isn't actually allocated. And the way that this works is basically the uh, address sanitizer, or well, when your program uh, compiles and uh, when it actually allocates some space, it's going to uh, allocate some uh, basically bad spaces uh, through, throughout uh, every allocation. And so once uh, you make one allocation, it's going to make an allocation right after it that's going to say, if I hit this, then the uh, address sanitizer is going to say, this is 
this is an area where we've deemed it to be not safe to access. And so uh, there's a bunch of ways we can debug this problem, right? So if I look in purely the console, we can see right away the type at the top of uh, issue that we're hitting and the address sanitizer tells us that this is a heap buffer overflow. And there's a few other bits of information here that are pretty useful. So it tells us that there's this address of uh, where we're, we're located. It says this address is located uh, zero bytes to the right of a three byte region. Now, this three byte region, right, is defined as this. And what this three byte region is referring to is the space that we just allocated, right? We allocated these three bytes for this string that I was trying to set up. And uh, it's telling us that, well, you're trying to place this right, right after this three byte region, right? So this is a very common uh, heap buffer overflow case is where we just walked right off the end of the memory that we were allocating. Another cool thing that Xcode offers us is if we look over in the left panel over here, we can click on this little RAM symbol thing. And if we click on that, it'll actually bring us to this little RAM uh, debugging spot. And right now, it's gonna put us, and you can see the address right here, it's gonna put us exactly where it's trying to place this region right now. And there's really not much useful information. I mean, we're trying to place a zero, it, it failed. Um, this generally isn't you know, that useful to look at, but the cool thing is that we can actually go to this address. So if I copy this and I paste it in here, and now I've realigned my uh, memory to be starting at this top location. And we can actually see that in the top of these three bits here, this is where I wrote the LUC into my memory. And the byte that I'm trying to access is the value right after it, right? So this is a nice little way to see that, okay, this is what I have in the memory and this is where I'm trying to access it. So this is a fairly clear problem, right? Um, and obviously because we wrote the code that it's pretty clear why the mistake, mistake exists. But in this particular situation, the address sanitizer is really telling you exactly what is going on and why this is not working. So clearly, right, we're trying to place something down uh, right after our three byte region. And so clearly we need a larger buffer. And in this case, the, the fix is really to have a larger buffer that would work in this situation. Now. The clearer fix is to not do not do this weird uh, memory setting thing, but this is the type of situation that, um, and I think it, it it spells out quite well how a heap buffer overflow could occur. Now, if we go ahead and run this again, we can see that we are successful and there are no memory corrupting events occurring. Let's move on to our second example. So the second example is actually using some C code. And the C code, uh, we're reusing our game board that I used in my other tutorial uh, as well. This time though, we have a different uh, game board uh, function. And this one is game board create, and it's going to create a game board. Now, the compiler actually catches uh, this situation in our own code, and it's actually telling us right here that you're trying to return a local variable. Uh, so what the, what the situation is that we're dealing with is a, um, it's going to be the use after return case, right? So we're trying to use a stack variable. And because, you know, all the stack variables are going to be, well, put on the stack. And when we roll back the stack after we've called this function, we come back to our other call and all that memory that was created on the stack in this function is now garbage, right? Or really unaccessible to us. So uh, the compiler is actually going to catch this particular case, but you can imagine other code that you may not have written or it's already packaged into a library. And this type of situation could occur where, hey, there's actually some bad behavior here. And uh, you could find these without, you know, actually having the compiler warning you about it already. But this is a case where the compiler is smart enough to tell us that we are returning a stack variable as a pointer to something that won't be able to access it after it's returned. So uh, if we go ahead and let me just go ahead and actually disable the address sanitizer just for a second to see what we end up getting here. So uh, you can see that the, the values that we end up getting are mostly just garbage, right? But this is another situation where you are getting garbage values, but this could lead to serious problems in your application, right? I mean, if it, it's very clear when we're printing it out that it's wrong, but you can imagine a scenario where you pass these values onto something else 
and unwittingly, you know, you now have garbage throughout your application. Now, a way, uh, the way we can catch this, again, is obviously enabling our address sanitizer. We can run this. And now we can see that the address sanitizer clearly catches this case, telling us that it is a stack use after return. And so the, the case is very clear. We're trying to use this game board pointer that we had, right? We're trying to use the value that it points to, but of course, because it was on the stack, it no longer exists. All right, so um, I'm just gonna end up commenting this guy out because the fix is really to probably malloc something if we wanted to return a pointer, or we should probably just return the struct in a simple case like the game board here. All right, so uh, let's go back to our third example. So the last example is a use after free. Now the use after free case is kind of an interesting one. Uh, I find the address sanitizer is good at detecting cases where you've, uh, so just for some clarification on what use after free means, use after free means that you uh, you allocated a buffer, then you freed the buffer, and then you tried to write to that memory, right? So it should be freed, but you're still attempting to write to the pointer that contains this information. Now, uh, if in this example, we'll see that I have this buffer here, and we are trying to deallocate the buffer right after it, which is clearly an issue, right? If I'm going to try and allocate this, uh, this information right after, I don't want to be deallocating this uh, really at all because I need to return the buffer to uh, the caller. Now, I'm going to go ahead and let me just make sure my address sanitizer is off. And we're going to try and run this and see what we get. So it actually looks like everything worked out correctly. And this is, uh, you might be sensing a theme here, but this is a very common issue with um, memory issues in general, right? If you're uh, setting something that is deallocated and your program might run fine, but in other cases it might not. And if we keep running this, we might eventually get some bad values and there we go. So here's a random case where, hey, we crashed, but you just noticed that there were three or four times that we didn't, right? So the the behavior is, is not deterministic and that's, you know, pretty bad to have. So let's go back and enable our address sanitizer. And we can run this again. And of course, it's going to catch this for us. So here we go, here's the issue. We have a heap use after free. And uh, it, I mean, it's pretty clear on this example where uh, this is going wrong, right? We clearly have this buffer that we're deallocating and then we immediately try to assign it. So here's another great case where the uh, where the uh, address sanitizer is really great at pointing out exactly where this issue is occurring, right? Instead of finding it out later where it might have worked or it maybe crashed on you, uh, we find out immediately that the problem lies right here. Now, one case that I find it doesn't really work in is let's say we deallocate this buffer later. Now, this is still an issue, right? Because We've written a bunch of data to it, but then we said that it should be freed up. And then we're gonna try and reuse it down here, right? And I do find that doing this, uh, we will get some garbage sometimes. Um, so the first value here seems to be garbage, but the rest of the values, they seem fine, right? And again, this is another case where your program might run completely fine, but in fact, you're you know trying to read from freed memory. And I find that the address sanitizer doesn't really catch these particular cases, but what does catch these particular cases is the guard malloc. Now, the guard malloc is basically going to, um, it's going to know exactly when we're trying to access something that was freed. So if something is freed, it's going to basically assign this memory to say, hey, this memory is now unusable. And if we try to access it, then we're going to essentially blow up. So, if we run this, we can see, hey, here the guard malloc is telling us exactly, hey, you're trying to read this buffer, right? And obviously there's there's less information in this because it's not the address sanitizer. The guard malloc is a separate thing together, but it is a different tool that you can use to detect these memory corruption cases. Um, the address sanitizer obviously gives us much more information on you know what is occurring and we can inspect the memory and all that good stuff. Um, but this is still a great tool to know that, 
hey, you just access something that is clearly freed, right? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you guys in another one. See you then.